In a tweet, the company revealed that it has opened up its first chargers to other EVs and added the option to charge a non-TSLA at a supercharger within the app. With this move, Tesla's making it easier for all EVs to hit the road and stay charged. But the real question that everyone wants to know is how this will impact Tesla's stock price. Welcome to the future of electric vehicle charging. We'll go into more depth about this thrilling announcement in this video. Join us as we examine the future of electric vehicle charging with Tesla and how it will alter the landscape for Tesla stock. We'll also look at the possible influence on Tesla's charging network and get a glance at some rumored improvements on the Model Y. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Cost, but first, Make sure you're a Wall Street Games subscriber. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Tesla has opened its first superchargers to non-Tesla vehicles. They announced this via a tweet that included a video that demonstrated how simple it is to use. Just select the charger site, choose your stall, unlock the CCS adapter, plug it in, and charge. The app updates your charging status in real time, and when you're done, you receive a summary. While Tesla continues to rapidly expand its network exclusive to Teslas, the company has managed to make charging another EV almost as easy as plugging in and charging a Tesla at a supercharger. They are currently opening more superchargers to all EVs throughout this year and the next, and I'm excited to see how this works out. This should make owning any EV much more viable. Although this is wonderful news, there are two things to note. First, Tesla is forfeiting a benefit. Considering how many charging stations are being built every week, it is unclear how big of an impact this shift will have. But things will change. The excellent supercharger experience that Tesla owners are accustomed to will alter the decision to purchase a Tesla over another EV, since it won't completely take into account the fact that traveling by road in another EV is stressful and driving a Tesla is easy. All EVs will find it simpler thanks to Tesla, but traffic will still be heavy. Second, even though this is wonderful, there will already be issues because EVS charge ports are located in different places. The incredibly low wire length of Tesla superchargers is intended to reach its exciting to see more and more electric vehicles, EVs, on the road. But with that comes the challenge of making sure there are enough charging stations to keep them all charged. The back left of the cars were parked while the F-150 Lightning video is exciting to see it's taking up two charging stalls. This charging cable is meant for Tesla that would back into the spot left of this. One concern that arises is the issue of parking places turning into dead zones as a result of nearby vehicles using charging wires. As more and more EVS go on the road, it's something to watch out for. Speaking of Tesla, I'm interested to see how their network of charging stations develops as more automakers enter the electric vehicle market. Since Tesla is the market leader in terms of the number of EVS on the road in the U.S., it will be interesting to see if other manufacturers modify their charging stations to prevent problems with Tesla updates. Though they are currently only manufactured in Berlin, there is hope that these options will soon be available in the U.S. as well. However, the most intriguing news is the rumored refreshed version of the Model Y codename, which excited me when I saw it on display at Tesla's investor meeting. It's important to keep an eye on Juniper which is reportedly scheduled to begin production in 2024 and will feature changes to the exterior and interior, as well as an emphasis on production efficiency. Some have speculated that Tesla may be adding features to the Model Y by 2024, such as a complete redesign of the car structure. I can't help but wonder what kind of changes we might see in the upcoming year. We all knew that Elon Musk would unveil Master Plan Part 3, but we weren't sure if this would just involve Tesla talking about massive scale or if they would fully unveil their future 25000 EV hardware 4.0 or the Project Highland Model 3. These are just rumors for rooters, so take them with a grain of salt. But here's what happened at the event. Elon even tweeted about the big surprise that they were running late. The first person out was Kirkhorn Tesla CFO, who discussed how they were going to discuss the macro and micro aspects of their future master plan part 3. The event began with confirmation that the original invite was, in fact, a bunch of Tesla bodies, which was pretty standard for the company. Elon and Drew Baglino then appeared to discuss the general contents of Master Plan Part 3, outlining what they believed to be a direct route to an entirely sustainable future for Earth. They went into detail about how dirty energy is now and how clean it can be in the future, as well as exactly how many materials and batteries are needed for this transition. Elon said that most people, even those who are fairly smart, 
don't think it's possible. But he assured us that it is. They said they'll need 240 terawatt hours of battery energy storage. With $10 trillion invested in manufacturing and 30 terawatt hours of renewable power, they also stated that they will only need half of the energy needed today because electric energy is significantly more efficient and uses less than 0.2% of Earth's geographical area is needed since solar energy is so effective that a $10 trillion investment would only account for 10% of global GDP in 2022. Additionally, there are no unsolvable resource issues. The primary five areas they are concentrating on are creating a renewable grid utilizing household solar, for example, moving to electric vehicles, and generally it takes less mining than the present economy does, converting to hydrogen and heat pumps for high-temperature heat distribution in those circumstances, in addition to maintaining boats and aircraft powered sustainably, their next-generation vehicle is going to be even better, though they'll be combining design, engineering, manufacturing, and automation all at the same time. And get this, all the people working on these systems are going to be in the same room together. They show us an illustration of the difference between their current assembly process and where they plan to go into the future after that Colin Campbell came up to talk about their powertrain. They'd already made the Model 3 powertrain 20 lighter uses 25% less rare earth materials and the powertrain factory is 75 smaller and 65% cheaper since its introduction in 2017. And get this, their next drive unit will use no rare earth materials whatsoever. It seems that Tesla is making significant strides in optimizing the electronic architecture of the vehicles. They're designing their controllers for each car, and the next-gen vehicle platform will have 100 of their controllers giving them more flexibility with design and software. They're also moving away from a 12-volt battery to a 48-volt architecture. On the software side, they're always making updates and enhancements and working hard to optimize their battery packs and other features through fleet learning along with working on autonomous fleet management and the robotic taxi project. Tesla also discussed fully autonomous driving, FSAD and how it fits into a sustainable future given that cars are typically idle when not in use. Additionally, the company is developing the Tesla bot, which has several prototypes and is rapidly improving in terms of charging Tesla has a significant advantage over its competitors in the market. Their pre-built superchargers can already facilitate 99% of road trips, and they boast a 99.9% .9 site-level uptime rate. Additionally, Tesla is cutting expenses making the deployment of their superchargers 20 to 70% less expensive than that of their rivals. This video covers everything there is to know about Tesla's new model and what happened on Investor Day. It also includes longer charging cables for their fourth generation supercharger stalls, which support electric cars with charge ports located in different locations. It's possible that this is how Tesla plans to fix the cable linking issue that was previously mentioned. I'll have to end it here. But that pretty much sums up everything about Tesla's new model and what happened on Investor Day. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.